Well, hello. So last year, November 2019 or so, I did a video and a lot of people said that they really like whenever I get more into the nerdy aspects of electronics. Now, I personally thought that it bored some people. Maybe it does. I don't know. But seem to be a lot of comments where people like it. So I had an idea. I'm working on a circuit right now and I thought, you know what? This might actually make for a good video. So let's do three different types of tone controls on a very simple overdrive and just how drastically those three different types of tone controls can completely change the sound of the circuit quite drastically, even though they're simple tone controls. So let's dig into it. So here's what I'm looking at right here. Very simple circuit. These wires getting in the way, that's just my bypass switch basically. Just a couple resistors, it's a non-inverting op amp with a simple tone control at the end and then a volume. So let's take a listen to this first tone control. And that's what the volume said about halfway. I can brighten it up, I can darken it a little bit, but I'm gonna to try to get the same sort of type of tone, meaning I want a little bit of clarity. I don't want it too bright, I don't want it too dark. So that's kind of the edge I'm really teetering on right there, rather than do a 20 minute video of me fiddling a knob for, for five minutes at a time. All right, let's take a look at that circuitry right now. All right, so here's the basic circuit. This is just a sound generator, so don't get confused by that. It just allows us to do a, a, a function here in a second. So the sound comes in through here, goes through this resistor, goes through that capacitor. All this stuff up here, that's just, uh, that's just power, basically. It helps bias the op amp. Then we have the gain stage. Uh, that's where the gain pod is. We have a couple diodes and that are clipping asymmetrically, soft clipping. And then this also is part of the gain stage. That's sort of, um, yeah, if you're familiar with any of these videos, you know what that's doing. That's kind of telling what, what frequency we want the op amp to, uh, to boost and, and where to cut it. So we go out through this capacitor and this is the tone control, 25 K pot, uh, capacitor to ground, super simple. Normally you'd put the volume control right here, or you could put a buffer in between this and the volume control if you want to get really fancy. But let's look at what happens. This is just a sweep of the pot. So that's, you can kind of see what happens. Again, 400 hertz is fairly mid-rangey, right? Uh, low mid-range, let's say. So you're cutting a little bit all the way down. This is, this blue line here is with the pot all the way down. This line up here at the top is with it all the way up. So that's as bright as it gets, which is, quote unquote, transparent. So you can kind of see what that does. All right, so this is the new circuit. Again, keep in mind, this here is just a, just a switch to turn it on and off, just to flip it to bypass. But more importantly is the little circuitry around it, but you can't really see a whole lot. So we'll talk about the circuit here in just a second, but that's what it looks like. Just another simple tone control. So now I have the traditional Big Muff style circuit. Now it's called the Big Muff tone control because I think it was popularized by that. What it actually is, to get a little geeky with you, it's a high pass filter and a low pass filter and sort of kind of like a blend control between the two. You're kind of panning between the high pass and a low pass. So it's gonna be like really bright on one side and really dark on the other. And whenever it's bright, it's gonna drop some bass. Whenever it's dark, it's gonna drop a bunch of treble. So what that effectively does is it gives you sort of a mid scoop and allows you not to have so many mids. If you don't like mids, it's a good tone control for that. So right now, again, I, I have it set to, a, the treble It's about where the last one was, just a little bit of presence, not too much, not too bright, not too dark. And again, with all this, the other controls are the same, volume's the same, uh, same level, the output level rather, and the gain is cranked all the way up. It's just a soft clipping circuit. All 
So as you can see, it has more bottom end. It definitely could have more treble if I turned it up. And the effect, it, it sounds like it's bigger and fuller. It's just because we're dropping some mids and increasing some bass and trebles. Really, that's, that's what's going on. Nothing else changed. Let's talk about that in a little more detail. So as you can see, same exact circuit all the way up to the tone control. We have, as I explained earlier, you have your high pass filter, you have a low pass filter, and then a potentiometer, which pans between the two. Now, if we sweep the pot, meaning turn it all the way to up and down, we simulate that, here's what it looks like. So this blue line here is with it all the way up, so it increases treble, drops the bass, and the opposite, when it's counterclockwise, increases the bass, drops the treble. So you can sort of see how that gets mid-scoopy right there. But let's stop sweeping this and let's just look at what happens when the tone control is centered. So this is the tone control center. Now, now don't get confused, that looks gigantic, but you have to look at the scale over here. So it's not that huge, but it is a little significant. So that does tell you that it dips right around 800 to 1000 hertz. Another way of doing the Big Muff style tone control is simply to do the opposite. So taking the low pass filter and the high pass filters and setting them in such a way as you get an actual mid bump. You still can cut some bass down, you still can uh, increase some treble, but rather than having a scoop because of where the filters are placed, now you have a mid bump. So let's play that. So as you probably heard, even though it's still technically a big muff style tone stack or tone control, whatever you want to call it, it still is voiced completely different. So therefore it sounds quite different. So it's a fun little trick to do. If you have uh, like a Boss DS1, you can do the same sort of thing. Of course, the Big Muff Pi, you can do the same thing on that. Uh, it's a fun little trick if you're into modding pedals. Just I'll show you what I'm doing in just a second. Let, let's go discuss the circuit. So as you can see, it basically looks the same. What has changed are the values in this area, in the tone stack area. Let's simulate it. First of all, let's sweep the pot. So sweeping the pot, again, it does drop some bass still. It still increases some treble. Uh, opposite, you know, whenever you have the knob from clockwise to counterclockwise, it's still doing those sorts of things. But, however, you can, and you can see it's a little more mid-humpy. That's not a word I know, but... We'll call it a word. So when I don't sweep the pot, just looking at it with the pot in the middle, this is what it looks like. Again, don't be confused because of the scale over here. I mean, it's only, it's not that big of a hump, but it still is a little bit, a couple dB. So a third type of tone control that we can use is the Tube Screamer type of tone control. Now this tone control is pretty common. Of course, there's tons of Tube Screamers out. Basically what it's doing when you roll all the way down, it's making a low pass filter, which cuts off some highs. When you boost it up, you're increasing the gain in the next op amp, which is then boosting highs. And so right now, um, I'm, I don't have it set up like a tube screamer. I'll show you the schematic in just a minute, but this is how it sounds. All right, so let's discuss the circuit now. Here's the basic circuit. As you can see, it has changed a little bit. This stage is still the same. However, instead of going to a tone stack that was passive, we're now going to more of an active style tone stack. So we're going from one op amp into another op amp. Here's the tone control. And this is just, again, pulled from a tube screamer. Let me change this value real quick because I forgot to change that value. And let's see what it does. Let's sweep the tone stack. Now you'll see this stuff is bunched up a little bit here in the middle. The taper on a typical um, potentiometer on a, on a tube screwer type circuit is 
kind of different. It's different than like a linear style or uh, an audio taper or a reverse audio taper. It's just a little different in order to make it work a little better. So keeping that in mind, because this is done in a linear fashion, so imagine the line going up a little bit. I can't simulate this with Circuit Lab, at least that I know of. But you can see what the extremes do. So this is boosted, and this one is cut. So it's uh, it is unique. I do like it. It's a little more. It's a little more flat. Without sweeping it, let's see what it does. All right. Without sweeping it, and with the tone control set in the middle, assuming it was linear, which as we know, the tone control, the potentiometer on a tube skimmer is not linear. But if it were, this is what it would look like. It cuts by a couple dB. Again, this is not a gigantic cut like it looks like because we have to take the scale on the side into account. Just a real quick mention. So you may or may not know that I have a book on Amazon called How to Modify Guitar Pedals, I think. Now this is a bit of an older book, but it still has quite a lot of different mods. You can, I've had people ask me like where they can get it. It's available on Amazon if you want it. It's, I don't know, 40 or 50 bucks or something like that because it's so thick. And also, I am still working on a new updated version with different pedals and different mods. So it's coming out soon. But if you want the older one, it's available. All right, so that's the video. So I'd love to hear your comments below what you think, if you liked uh, number one, number two, or number three. And I'd also love to hear your thoughts on if you do like these type of videos, because to be honest with you, I'm not really wanting to bore the snot out of people, but seems like you like it. So if you do like it, let me know below. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I don't know, I guess unless you don't want to subscribe. If you don't really like it, you probably wouldn't subscribe, actually, come to think of it. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you don't, don't. Thanks for watching.